David Bonson joins us now. He is the chief investment officer for the Bonson Group. Uh, David, what was driving the market today? Well, it's interesting because the market had rallied so much yesterday, over 500 points, that you generally expect a little selling pressure the next day. And I think that the market extending the rally, even though it actually was down earlier this morning, indicates that there may be more uh, people coming back in, perhaps expecting the Fed tomorrow. Certainly, they're not going to raise rates again, but maybe the Fed will give some indication that they're closer than people thought to reversing course. Hmm. Let's talk about consumer uh, confidence, which fell for the third consecutive month in October. What's causing that? Well, we believe consumer confidence is always a backward-looking measure, not forward-looking. Consumers respond in their confidence to whatever it was they just got done hearing. And what you don't see is consumers spending less. So their confidence may indicate that they're hearing of difficult things in the economy, but their spending habits are showing that they are employed, that wages have grown, and that they're more than willing to go out to eat and, uh, and buy more entertainment. Let's talk air travel. JetBlue Airways stock fell to a 12-year low. As you know, the company has been defending its acquisition of Spirit Airlines. What does that mean for investors, for the travel sector, um, specifically for the traveling experience? Well, JetBlue is in sort of a category all of its own right now. The stock is down to about $3. They're fighting for their survival. Uh, the airline business is a very tough business. We've seen all sorts of big airlines in and out of bankruptcy for years. They have very expensive union contracts generally. And in JetBlue's case, they're trying to fight with the government over the Spirit Airlines acquisition. They have a lot of work ahead of them. Uh, moving on to some uh, global issues, the World Bank is now forecasting crude oil to surge to a record $157 per barrel if tensions continue to rise in the Middle East. And clearly from the news today, they do so. And for a while, how would oil prices uh, impact it, change in the U.S. and the rest of the world as things continue to escalate? Well, the World Bank doesn't have a very good track record at predicting these things, but it doesn't have to go to 157 to become a problem for the American economy. Even anything over $100 a barrel would be very problematic. Here around $80, $85, it's okay. It's not great, but gasoline prices have not exploded higher. But I think once you get up to $100, it starts to erode demand cut into economic activity, and the Biden administration can't release more oil from the strategic petroleum reserves like they did last year. Right. David Bonson, thank you. Thanks so much.